What's up? What's up? What's up? Yo, always, always no. wanted to say that, yo. The no. fuck was no. that? That was the opening from Martin, man, whenever he's on his radio oh. show, man. Martin, Martin was one of the ones I used to skip, so. I'm All right, not. I should punch you in the face right now, but we're at the top of our podcast. Welcome to the Back of the Class podcast. We are your hosts. I am the Esteban Serrano. I'm Juanca David. I'm Zach. And uh, this week, we have a bunch of super, super dope uh, topics to talk about. Rap is one of them. Rap music. As usual. Daredevil is another. Mm-hmm. Damn right. And the last one is PS4. PSVR. For the PS4. For the PS4. He was half right. PS4 VR4. Yo, man, stop confusing everybody. <laughs> I'm confused. Now, anyway, if you have uh, been an avid Back of the Class podcast listener, we appreciate you. We would love to hear from you on Twitter. Hit us up with the hashtag B-O-T-C. And, of course, if you love listening to the podcast, please subscribe so that it is automatically in your podcast appness.com, whatever. And um, also leave us a rating, man, if you love us. If you don't love us, then mind your business. If you don't love us, give us at least a four. If you don't love us, <laughs> That's hilarious. Leave a comment why, because I love... We take fours, we take fives. Uh, any of it. There you go. Yeah, if you're going to be negative, at least be creative. That's all I ask. Oh, like, my God. I see. I, th- th- why did you even ask that? Hey. There's I, some creative negative mother flowers in this world. <laughs> And some of the best material on the internet. He almost curses. <laughs> he almost curses. Uh, <laughs> there it is. I so do the, close. I do the um, UPN uh, gangster movie yeah. uh, dub oh overs. Yeah. Mother lovers and the mother flowers and slime ball. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best. Son of a bridge. All those types mother of Mother father's a good one. Mother father was one of my mother flower was the one that my dad used to use all the time when he, he when he didn't want to curse, which was. Pretty much, he just Dude. cursed most of the time. Mother Flower really takes it in another my, direction. My favorite cover for cursing is watching the edited version of Scarface uh-huh. on UPN. Oh, wow. Say you know the scene to... when he's in the airport, oh, yeah. but he's in customs, and they got him, and they're like, how'd you get that scar, Tony? Eating potatoes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, they couldn't think of anything else. Right. Obviously, everyone knows the real line. So yeah. repeat it. Now, there's something that I've noticed as of late. And um, I f- forced my co-hosts to get in on this debate, argument, if you will. I'm starting to take notice of the fact that conscious hip-hop is at the forefront right now. And not only just of, like, you know, uh, of culture or of, you know, the current critics, events. current events and what have you, but it's also outperforming everything else it's selling records last year the only solo artist to sell a million records go platinum on a project was kendrick lamar and j cole and when you think of all of the people who dropped projects last year i think drake might have sold a million yeah i think if you're reading this did i don't know if if it was in 2015 or if it bled into this year i'm not sure right but that took a long time to get there, whereas these right. were like, bang, it right. kind of happened. You know what I'm saying? And what I'm noticing is a lot of the rap that gets the most radio play or the most like blogosphere love or like the most kind of chatter, they're not selling any records, mm-hmm. which leads me to believe or at least to theorize that the 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 kind of like, of the moment hip hop movements capitalizing on that sound is not only disposable when you think, you know, six months from now I'm not gonna be listening to it, but there was a time where it was monetarily valuable. That value has gone. So mm-hmm. what does that mean for the future of our favorite music genre? I mean you have to take things into account where if you you if you're a, a rap fan, you know it's not like just for the sake of consciousness, you know whether it's conscious or not, Kendrick is just dope and he's gonna rap his ass off. Same mm-hmm. thing with J. Cole, same thing with like Nah, same mm-hmm. thing, you know. Kanye. Yeah, I don't think it I think it, I think you got to take into account that they sell those records, not only because it's they're on the conscious tip on that record, but just because you know they're so good no matter what they deliver, it's most likely gonna be good shit. Right. Having said that, I do agree that 
uh, a lot of the street hip hop stuff is kind of definitely on the decline. Right. I'd say. Not even just street. Like I, I like to. <clears throat> I am not one to compartmentalize hip hop. Like I love, and when I say love, like again, I probably said it before on this podcast. My favorite album last year was Ray Swimmer's Shrimp Life. Yep. That was my favorite album. Like, you think, you know, To Pimp a Butterfly came out. Like, you know, all of these great bodies of work came out, and I didn't care. The ratchetness that was almost perfectly produced was the one that won for me. It was right. the one that, that I played the most. But I am an avid, you know, uh, conscious hip-hop fan. So I almost consider it nowadays either conscious or it's literally unconscious. Like, mm -hmm. you don't have to think to listen to the garbage type of two genres that I think are kind of dominating hip hop right now. Mm -hmm. Like and I feel like the unconscious stuff just doesn't hold its weight like at all. Yeah, I just think it's very momentary. Like momentary. Like you listen to it like oh this shit this shit bangs. Right. But then after a while there's no legs to it cuz you've heard it a million times and mm -hmm. it kind of fades off. You listen to a Kendrick or a J Cole you listen to a song a hundred times and then you just caught a line that just made sense to you because of something you saw on TV that day. It's just such a different experience, you know? Like, I am going to keep going back to Ray Sharmer because of those beats and just because of the way the... Just because of those chem just cause of the chemistry and just because how crazy those guys are. Um, and I'll go back to Kendrick a million times for different reasons. Right. Um, but it's, yeah, you know, some days I want it, it... And it's great how Kendrick and the... Holly Grove, the Lil Wayne Two Chains came out the same day, and it was mm -hmm. funny because I woke up that morning. I was like, "If I see one person tweeting about Holly Grove, I'm going to be surprised." Um, and <laughs> that's that's pretty Did much how, uh, me now. <laughs> uh, now people were, seem to be into it, but it was definitely Kendrick uh, grabbed the whole conversation. And it's um, there's just there there are different things, different things for different times. You now, know? do you think that the weight of a Kendrick Lamar release? Albeit unreleased, untitled, unmastered, ungave a bleep, yeah. music overshadowed the Kali Grove project, and is that why it didn't sell a dime? Um, I mean, I think any fan of any genre is gonna, if they're gonna go to iTunes or go to their album store, they're probably buying one album, you know? Right. Um, and I don't think. I think we're kidding ourselves if we say that even though it was Lil Wayne and 2 Chains, that it was going to be like a huge album mm -hmm. right, right now in sure. March 2016, you know? But prior to the release, what did you think it was going to sell? Because, Juan, you were mm. the most surprised, I think, of at the number. I thought College Girl was going to do a lot better than it did. I I don't know if Kendrick necessarily was the cause and effect of the low numbers. That is not my question. How much did you think it was going to sell? Oh, I never think about that. You never think. Numbers? I only thought about it when I saw the number, and I was like, "Wow, that's pretty low." Okay. But nowadays, I really don't don't think numbers. Right. But it's, like, it, with pretty much any rap album, it just seems like between like yeah t fifteen and like a hundred and seventy five thousand. You know. Yeah. Like. Yeah, like it's that's just, yeah. It's just kind of one, which is crazy, gray crazy bracket. wide. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, it's... fifteen thousand to a hundred and twenty-five. Well, every week it's somebody selling, you know, between about seventy-five and like maybe two hundred or maybe a little more, and that's right. just not a, like a big number. It's like I'll that's, tell you, that's the bottom, you know, that's the entry point, and then if you're like Drake and you come out with like half a million or something, or mm -hmm. you do with Kendrick, and then it's that's bigger, but. The the the, dude, the rappers definitely keep track of that shit because mm -hmm. when oh, yeah. when they get into it, that's the first shit right. they go, that's their yeah. go to. Yeah. Like yeah. you only sold fifteen k, you yeah. only sold whatever. Yeah. So they're definitely paying attention. Um, I just I think that the way things are being released nowadays, where you could only get it here, only get it there, hurts numbers no matter who it is. Sure. Because you know once where the you know back in the day you could just go anywhere and get any piece of music you wanted. Right. Now it's like. This new album's coming out, but only if you have Apple Music. And most right. people are gonna be like, "Fuck that! I'm not paying for Apple Music just to get that album. Right. I'll just get that shit legally or just Spotify a playlist." And that's so but I think. So, but here's here's the culture that that creates because the reason why that is taking place more so now than ever is because it's more financially valuable for the artist. You know, Apple is paying top dollar to have you know an exclusive album from right. an artist. So, you know, title is you know I'm sure doing the same thing, giving equity in the company at some points. You know, giving them titles, mm -hmm. title titles of you know um, 
in the company to have their music music be exclusive to title. So yes, as a consumer, it sucks for 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 us, and that may very well be a big part of why, you know, the numbers. Stay, it affects but the numbers because it. music has not been performing very well as mm -hmm. of late. Artists have to find a new way to make money off their music before they go out on a tour sure. and you know and things like that. So I mean, you'd have to see we're the only going to see it get kind of worse. I would imagine. I mean, you'd have to see what the deal is. If I'm if Apple Music is going, I'm giving you X amount of money, whether your album sells 15k or 250k. Right. And that's if what I'm it an is. artist, I'm like, you know what? I'll take that. Mm -hmm. But and if it's like it you get this amount, but if you don't sell at least 30. You only get half. You no, know what I'm saying? Apple like, doesn't care. Like the when when the conversations were coming out about Drake dropping his album as a, and and the offers that were being made to Kanye, it was all about money. It wasn't about numbers. It wasn't about incentives. It was like we will give you four million dollars to not release your album anywhere else. Like they didn't care what it sold or what it didn't. They just want to have it. Because but I part of it is. The bargaining chip. Part of it is the the whole, you know, the 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 press and the campaign that's sure. like this is exclusively available here. Well, have you guys seen a you know quote unquote conscious rap or con uh, conscious rap album or rapper do one of these big exclusives anywhere yet? Because I can't no. think of one. You no. know, it's like what a time but to be again, alive. They don't they... need to. Right. Yeah. They're the ones who don't need to. I think there's and they're the ones who wouldn't bring that cachet to an Apple or to a, a title. Or yeah, because they have a because the conscience has a stigma. Like back in the day, the no con it, was, it. it was the other way around. It was yo, I got to make the street shit if I want to make money in this right. music game. Right. If you want to be conscious, you know, you could do that, and I will respect your art right. and what you're saying, but you, you're not well, gonna get rich Jay -Z doing it. Said that. I can't do numbers like the Roots. Yeah, exactly. he said it. Yeah. It's Jay Z. <laughs> I want to do this, but I can't do numbers like them. Like lyrically, I, can't. I could be Talib Kweli. Yes. Yeah. And like I can't remember the rest of that line, but it's something about making money. Something yeah, about like making money. <laughs> like, it's like I'd rather make name money. a rapper who's you would say is you know very conscious and very, you know in that vein that does great numbers. Like I mean, the only one I could think about is Nas because he's the only one that back raps in about day. back in but the day. Was, but he not wasn't. He wasn't numbers. a conscious. exactly. But he wasn't. Oh. But he kind of he was talking about he told not, the line. Huh? He did. I mean, I feel like to a certain extent. Oh, he all definitely the told the line. Yeah. The line, so but he leaned more like, toward the conscious than he did to right. everything else. I, what I'm I would. I would say the only conscious. No, can't even say outcast because they're not always conscious either. No, no, no nobody all the is. Way nobody is. You know how often J Cole makes me like roll my eyes and want to push stop with some of the shit he says. Yeah, that's true. That's, it's yeah, like, that's true. and but Kendrick more, doesn't ever make me want to. Than they than than we've seen in the past. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they not dead prez. That's right. like straight up. Yeah. Like you know. Revolt and like, yeah, like they're and not shit, yeah. that. The that overall extent. project though. But the overall yes. project has way more yeah. messaging and symbolism and meaning than not. It's yeah. just like uh, you know, I people want to be able to agree on something and all be able to talk about something like something, and I think that's a big reason why Kendrick and J Cole are those guys because people don't know how to deal with the the. Um, What's it called? The <laughs> People reality? don't know how to deal with the contradictions uh, that they hear in something like Lil Wayne oh, Two Chains right. because they hear some really reprehensible shit and they right. and they hear great beats and they hear clever stuff right. and it's like it's not easy to engage with for some people, which is it sucks. Like and people got to stop. Like I've learned really early on in my in my listening to hip hop not to take everything that is being said verbatim you can't and like but people do and like which is why people what which was why i think tupac was such a polarizing figure because you can't be saying dear mama and then sing i gotta i get around mm -hmm. like how do you want it and brenda got a baby like to them that didn't make any sense yeah. but to us you know you know human beings think many different ways but people are like that's the image you have that's the only one we ever want to see and if you do anything else then you've never been real and it's yeah. like being real is being diverse being you know being eclectic being different. showing all sides like, of yourself too. all multifaceted yeah. that's yeah. that's that's Which, a real life human yeah. being. You don't feel like shaking everybody's hand and and, and not every thought and not time. every thought you have or thing you say is going to be something that people can like pump their fists right. either. You know exactly. So that that standard is and then working in this business, I'm sure we've had our hearts broken when it comes to artists that we love and we finally get to work with them and they're not what 
we thought they were yeah. or hoped mm-hmm. they were from their music. Like, that's happened to me probably three and four times. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, between the two of them, you got to be realistic. Like, real is like the greatest term in hip hop. Mm-hmm. Keeping it real, being real. But it's never re- it's never real when someone says real. Like, mm-hmm. but you have to put the, put the real in realistic and be realistic, people. This stuff is entertainment at the end of the day. Like, yeah, people need to learn how to separate. Like, when we've had this conversation before, I used to be very snobby with my rap, where I used to be like, You'd be like, yo, you listen to that new, new two chains? I'd be like, two chains? I'd be like, no, man, that's that's fucking Noise. you know, I'm I'm over here listening to this fucking you know, Nas record or right. this old Talib shit, and it's and it's slaughterhouse when I was right. super into slaughterhouse, and I was like, yeah, man, like that's real shit. And you're just like, dude, that that's fine, but right. you gotta get Ignorant sometimes you sometimes. get ra- you get you get tired of like like yo, your favorite team wins ten chapters in a row. After a while, the fans will be like. Oh, fuck, dude, we won ten championships. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like after a while, you gotta like you you turn to something else to like you know. Right. And I think that's the balance. Like if you into the conscious shit, it's am- awesome. Keep listening to it. But after a while, you need that two chains. You, you need that way. You need man. that ignorant you know shit that yeah. make that just entertains you. You know yeah, what I mean? And that's it. and this week, like what, what was the French Montana was on Breakfast Club talking about? Like this whole thing was brought yeah, up to him. He was saying something like the this. Uh, Ka- what Kendrick's doing was kind of built on street stuff, which is now getting less cred, sort of. What? He said each style of rap, whether it's street rap, conscious rap, trap, or anything else, should be looked equally as being hip hop. Um, he said the Grammys were kind of like the conscious rap show, basically. And I kind of agree with yeah, him. Yeah, I agree with extent. that too. Yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of how I felt like, you know. Well, at least that's that's how my listening patterns kind of reflect. Like, I love all hip hop. Like, I love trap rap. I love you know druggy drug dealer rap. I love super conscious rap. I love rapidy rap, acrobatic mm-hmm. you know flow of rap. I love East Coast West Coast. It doesn't matter to me if I find you know value in it. I will listen to it. I'm not like an elitist. I don't separate my mm-hmm. stuff. Like he, he's absolutely right. There are some like a Ray Schwimmer. Like, how many Grammys were they nominated for? They had the best album last year, in my opinion. Like, right. in your opinion, you know, sonically, the beats and the, and the flow and all of that stuff yeah. were great. They should have been in the conversation. They had four or five singles from that album that were charting, that were bangers. Why weren't they in that conversation? Because the uh, the university or the, the, the whatever they call it, the academy, whatever it is, doesn't take that into consideration. Yeah. Also, I mean, we also got to think, like, when we talk about what the conscious and how that's selling, we all gotta take into account like in today's climate and current events, it's in the forefront right now and it's been in the forefront for the last year or so. So I feel like that stuff has also played a huge part on the emergence of the Absolutely, conscious yeah. rapping that's yeah. been taken. What them killing black folk left and right? Yeah, like all that, you know, you Black Lives it, Matter. No, I'm joking. <laughs> well, no, that's you know the Black Lives Matter, matter. They, they like you know the yeah. presidential election, the racial stuff right, with right, Trump. Right, right. I feel like this stuff issues. has which and it's great because the music brings those issues to the forefront, which is what you need for change. So, right. but I think that, that definitely is a big factor as to why that's a great point. that type of music is coming up. And it's like, all right, like I kind of want to hear less about gang members killing each other on the street, right. and I kind of want to hear more of like. Uh, constructive thinking of what we could do to make things better. And at the time where we wanted to hear about gang members killing each other on the street, it wasn't the most prominent thing in the world. There wasn't video games where you could do that. There yeah. wasn't movies that you could watch about that. It was like the yeah. ooh, this is like new and kind of forbidden. Like now that's everywhere. Yeah. But the best part about that was like you needed that shit because I never lived in Houston, but I listened to Scarface right. and I kind of I could. He painted that picture like, yep. damn, Houston is fucking crazy. Yeah. And you need that shit to know what's going on outside of your little bubble that you live in. Right. So it's definitely an essential part of not even hip-hop, but just music in general. Mm-hmm. So or, I hope it keeps getting, like, you know... I mean, I hope the street stuff comes up a little bit more so you can get, like, a nice even keel side of it, but... Um, I think it's a good thing that the conscious stuff is coming to the to So you the think it's a fad? Like, you think it's just like, oh, now the time is kind of that's on the rise and the other's on a decline, eventually it'll yeah. flip-flop? Or do you think that this is like... I just think it's a wheel that's going to keep going around and the successful people will keep being successful um, and yeah. we'll see who, like, spurs the movement. Like, I'm guessing 
most people would probably want to be following J. Cole and Kendrick's uh, lead right now. But, you know, right. Drake's going to come out next month. He's going to sell a ton of rap, uh, ton of records. He doesn't right. necessarily fit into kind of either of these categories. Mm-hmm. Right. So maybe yeah, he's in his own he's category. He's an anomaly, right? Yeah, and it's like well, Future's going to put out something else, sell a bunch of albums. YG will probably come back and sell a bunch of albums. And YG was like a big uh, focal point of this, of like when he came out and it was like him and DJ Mustard. And it was like they really like re-simplified yep. everything mm-hmm. and made it just about Compton and not Kendrick's yes. Compton. Right. Um, well, their their are not that different, but uh, right. you know, the way they're talking about it. Right. Um, the narrative. So we'll see. You got Denny we Brown were... coming too, and that's, yeah. you know, not comedy, but that's, you know, a little bit of wordplay, a little bit of outrageousness. I only want to hear what Danny Brown is going to compare the smell of the bleep <laughs> to this time. Because Cool Ranch Doritos and the Penguin... Are the Dude, two I, reigning uh, smells? I cannot of the wait. Pee, according Penguin. to, <laughs> I can't. According to Danny uh, Brown, I just love to hear him describe the smell of that. All and, right. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to hear his shit. This felt good to go deep into rap. Um, yeah, man. Let we'll us be, know what you we'll think. We'll be back too. definitely. Let us know what you think. Yeah. Hit us up. Hashtag B O T C. All right. If we're absolutely wrong, let us know. We said a lot of different stuff, so I don't think we can be wrong. Hopefully, yeah, we can me. only be right. The internet <laughs> find us. All right, Juan, where, where are we going this weekend? Going to Hell's Kitchen? Dude, I just finished House of Cards yesterday, so it's like when you eat something, so you leave room for what you really want. I finished House of Cards, and I'm ready for Daredevil, man. Daredevil. Um, a lot of people have seen it, and they say it's a lot better than the first season. It's a what lot faster. What do you mean faster. they've seen it? It's out already? No, but like, you know, the like, screeners, like TV screeners, TV okay. critics. Like, we got to yeah, get you those bloggers. screeners. Yeah, Netflix. man. Please, if you know who, like, Jay Kadavid, send them my Apple's way. Media. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I hear nothing but good things. The last trailer, like the final trailer, like yeah. it's just so intense. So you like to look ahead of time? I like see to look what? at the trailer, yeah, because I want to no, see. No, at the people's reviews, or you just look at like headlines, just um, like Reddit? A I bit. usually look, look at reviews at? after I watch it right, yeah. to see Definitely. if I agree or if there's something. You don't something... want to be influenced? Is no. why you don't, want, you don't read? I, that's just, I'm the same way. It's I don't want to be so long, and I'm still worried about being influenced. Right. Well, I, also, it's like you read, a, it's like, to me, it's like horoscopes. You know, like. I don't believe in horoscopes, but like th- the way I see horoscopes is you're gonna try to connect dots that simply aren't there just to make sense of what you read. Mm-hmm. So it's like Taurus, you're gonna find good fortune today. So like you can randomly get an extra bag of chips at the machine. You're like, that's what the thing was telling right, me, right, right. which is not. It has nothing to do with it. That's why I see reviews, and re- if I see a review that says, "Oh, like everything's good except the writing in this one scene is terrible," then you watch like. Maybe it is pretty terrible. It's like, right, maybe, would I feel yeah. that way if I didn't read that review? Right. Okay. Um, what, you, up, huh? what are you most excited about for Daredevil? What, um, do you, what do you love about it? I hate to be cliche, but I want to see how the Punisher is going to be portrayed. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a long... I mean, we've had so... Not a ton of iterations of the Punisher, but it hasn't been done justice. Even though I... I'm sorry I'm in the minority, but I like the Thomas Jane Punisher. Mm-hmm. Um the one after that, Warzone, was pretty good. It was a lot more violent, which is what it should have been because it's it's Punisher, dude. Like you mm-hmm. can't you can't sugarcoat Punisher. Um, so I'm more excited to see how the Punisher is um, going to be portrayed in this one. It's that guy. He was on The Walking Dead, right? Yeah, um, Josh John Burnthal. Burn. Yeah, Josh or John? John. I'm sorry, if John you're or Josh? This. John Josh Baron yeah. Burn Barnthal. <clears throat> and yeah. I'm, and yeah, I just want to see like uh, I hear Charlie Cox is like really going to come into his own as okay. you know as the man without fear and how all the other characters connect because like you know Electra's going to be in it too so now it's Electra Punisher and you know Kingpin's gone now it's going to be the Japanese Yakuza mm. with the hand so yeah man I'm, I'm super psyched like I can't wait till it comes out on Friday can I air out my grievances go ahead let me hold on is Rosario Dawson still in it yes she okay. still plays Nightmare cool. she's the best go on go Esteban sorry I have one really big issue with Daredevil. And once again, for those who don't know, I am not a comic book reader, never have. I'm only watching the movies and what have you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's nothing super about this guy to me. This is like um, Ip Man. This is a kung fu flick told in, in I mean, English, I, not, in my opinion. I ain't seen a super anything yet. Now, I love the fight scenes. I think they're dope. I love how almost gory it gets at times. That's dope. I'm not saying that it's not, 
But for me, Super Azen, you haven't seen him fly? He can't fly. Okay. He ain't got nothing shooting out his eyes, his arm. Like, this ain't super to me. Well, the guy is blind, and he could hear, smell, and see better than anyone. You ever seen You ever seen Ray Charles? Is Ray Charles a, a, a superhero? He is he a been if he, he could have been if he was is trained Stevie by Wonder, a fucking martial artist. Is Stevie Wonder a, a, a Marvel character? No. Well, we just had everybody's... Saying. Brains here at Fuse.TV just got blown up last week because we were talking about action heroes versus superheroes. Ooh. And, you know, the people... Mm. You weren't in that meeting. It was no. in our... Yeah, we were talking about... Yeah, how know, did that call me into that meeting? Uh, you should have been there. Yeah, you should have just been there. But, yeah, it was su superheroes versus action heroes, and we were all like, what action heroes is thing? Because then Daredevil yeah. will be an action hero, right? It's like, it doesn't have superpowers. He would be super, bro. Yeah, I mean, it, it's also... super about him, right? Or did he get bit also, by you, something? It's a literal term. Superhero, you have to have a superpower, but, like... I think it's fine because like if they're making a TV show for Netflix and they're trying, they're doing people with like the real powers. It's yeah, not gonna, right. it's not gonna, it's sure. not gonna come. Even out though that Jessica good. Jones is leaning towards that mystical, like you know, but to have like some real powers going on, it's gonna involve sh big destruction. Oh yeah, and crazy effects that like the shows just wouldn't wouldn't be as good. Like they're focusing on the drama and they're trying to make it like really gritty and have the action be kind of. Right, it's like yeah. co closer up. It's more yeah. like fights. I mean, it's it's the movement that Christopher Nolan started. Like, yeah. you know, he the the first you know Batman Begins was a reimagining, but like a more realistic look at what Batman would be like. Mm -hmm. You know, and ever since that did so well, like that's why you know Daredevil, you know all these other series, I um like the Bat the Man of Steel, like they try to make it a little more realistic. Right, yeah. some of them. Did it well. Some of them did Man of Steel, mm. um, but I think it's a good movement. But I also think there should be some where it's like the Avengers, where you know you're watching a comic book movie. There's no right. reason for you to like, be like, "That's not realistic." There's no yeah. way right. you Who could cares? drop out of the sky. It's like, Fanta Who I mean, uh, Fast and Furious, anything, bro. Like that's yeah. the most unrealistic real stuff ever. Side note, question: In your conversation. Where would Iron Man and Batman fall? Iron action Man, I think, was action hero. Iron Man? Batman was action It was like if you don't have a superpower. Right, then you're not a superhero. If hero. you made a suit or something, you're an action hero. Yeah, I mean... Uh, look, I wasn't leading this conversation. So they like in the group I was, with like Rambo and action I didn't know Jackson this distinction existed, yeah, but... I, I mean, I agree with that. Yeah, that's that's actually really. Is good. that up? Is the the piece up? Or <clears throat> no, we were just talking about it because we were talking about it's Daredevil and Superman and Batman now. Ooh, but it's like what super, what action hero could be like? You tell me what superhero Van Damme's gonna be. I don't know. Like John McClane maybe could survive a <laughs> bunch of shit, but sooner or later, you know, he's gonna die. Exactly. <laughs> Do you? Real quick, have you watched any of the TV Marvel series? I think there's two, right? Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and I, Agent I tried to watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I could, just could not. I couldn't no. do it. It was yeah. a little boring. To and me. it's also very, it's all, you know, and, I, and I'm and i hard, like a hardcore fan, like, you know, um, but it's hard to follow characters that they, most of them, they just create out of thin air just to put them in the timeline mm -hmm. of the movies. And for me, I was just like, I'm not really invested in these guys because I, I just, you know, they're new and... I don't know. They just did it. It didn't draw me in. But um, the Flash you liked, and that's DC, right? Or you Flash, didn't like Flash, Flash, and Arrow are two of the best shows on TV wow. right now. And I'm not just saying that as a comic book like nerd. Right. I'm saying that because they're both very well written. Mostly Flash now. Arrow has seen better days. Definitely, mm -hmm. it's still good, but it's been better. But Flash, um, the writing is just, it's superb. Like the drama, and you know the 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 hero will overcome. And like when he's down, he's down. And when mm -hmm. he's up. He's only up for a little bit because here comes the next challenge. Cool. So if you know, even if you're not a comic book fan, I strongly would advise to at least checking it out. If you don't like it, you don't like it. It's not your cup of tea. I'm happy that there's so many good uh, comic book TV shows because the movies just have like realigned all of Hollywood. Yeah, and they're very polarizing. And it's like the TV shows seem like they're really for the comic book fans because you, you know, comic books you read every week or every sure. month, and it's like you gotta you you have something you can keep coming to. It develops. It's not just this one big moment uh, that a movie is. So I've been saying I'll check this, out Daredevil. I've been saying this recently, probably for the last two, maybe three years. And I was saying it primarily about hip hop, but now it's kind of starting to lean into other areas. The era that we're in right now, I like to refer to as the revenge of the nerds. Mm -hmm. I feel yeah. like yeah. Kanye, I feel like Drake, J. Cole, even, um, you know, like uh, Chance the Rapper, like 
these types of artists are the nerds yeah. of you but know yeah, wherever. But they are the biggest tastemaker, influential mm-hmm. people on because the planet. Because it's cool to be the nerd now. Right. Uh, and it's it's interesting to find out where that happened because like when I was a kid, like if you were into comics, if you like you were a fucking geek. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you know, I wouldn't Shameful. tell people Yeah, like I collected like X Men cards and basketball cards and baseball cards. Yeah. But at the same time, I hung out with like all the dudes from my block, and we played ball. Right. And I think our generation growing up never made that distinction. I know, like, yeah. if you listen to guy, people that are older than us, they will definitely say, like, "Yeah, I was picked on because I like comics, right. and I was picked on because I collected cards, and because right. I was into, you know, fucking Dungeons and Dragons." Yeah. Right. So I think in the '90s and with our generation, that should just change. And we've all grown up now, and we passed it on to our kids. So I, I feel like that's why. Like, like you said, like Chance, Kanye, like all those yeah. guys are our generation, and they grew up. Not, I mean, I don't, I'm not gonna speak for them and for where they grew up, because I'm sure in the hood, that wasn't the greatest thing either. If you were like into comics, um, but it's definitely a new generation thing where it's cool to be a nerd. Yeah. And that's Do you guys think it will awesome. ever become uncool to be a nerd again? Is it gonna come back around? I don't think so. Oh, it seems hard right. to imagine, right? Yeah. I feel like this has been a long time coming. Like the nerds had to come so long that I don't think they're ever going to give power over. And it's a good message, too, because it's like, whether it's comic books or it's anything else, like, look at this My Little Pony thing. Look at the BronyCon, dude. Like, years ago, you'd, you'd call them freaks. Like, dude, you dress up as a fucking horse and go to a... <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, now it's like, me. we're all like, I want to go to BronyCon. Yeah, 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 I yeah. want to see what it's about because yeah, right. we're all... I think we're living... <laughs> I mean, it's just but I wouldn't even play like I wouldn't even clown anymore. Oh, yeah, like, exactly. Yo, that's world. Like we're living in an age where I being enthusiasm. Yeah, we're living in a time where being open-minded is actually, you know, right. cool. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I mean, not all the way because obviously, look who's fucking almost going to be president. But right. for Let's the most part, open-minded. yeah. But like for the most part, I think we're living in a good time where you know, for the for the most part, everybody's pretty open-minded. So. Cool. All right, Juan, you got a couple other quick nerd bullet points for us here. Yes. Want to hear about the Killing Joke? Want to hear about this PSVR real quick? Yes. Killing Joke is one of the most famous Batman Joker stories. Yeah, by a lot Alan of, Moore, Watchmen. By Alan Moore, yeah, Inter who's Vendetta. wrote Watchmen. He did, you know, he's written fucking Swamp Thing. Like, yeah. he's one of, like, you know, most prolific writers. But, like, the Killing Joke is special because, like, it's very... Um, Graphic and like shit goes down. It's the Joker's story. It's yeah, one, it's one of his. It's one of his stories. iterations. Yeah, but like the shit that he does to like people close to Batman is like f- pretty fucked up. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're making an animated movie about it because now like DC's killing the animated game. Like okay. every Batman animated movie that's come out in the last couple of years has, has been pretty good. Okay. Uh, so this is one of the the biggest stories in Batman franchise and. To add more excitement, Mark Hamill, for those of you who don't know, Luke Skywalker, he voiced the Joker on Batman the Animated Series in the 90s, which I'm sure you guys watched when you were kids. He's been the Joker, the voice of the Joker way more than he's been Luke Skywalker. This is true. <laughs> yeah. And he does it so well. Yeah. And he's learning in video games, but they just announced that he's playing, he's going to voice the Joker. And the guy who voiced... Batman in the animated series, cool. Kevin Conroy is voicing Batman. Nice. So Ooh. it's like a nice, cool, like them getting back together. Right. And I love if that you watch the too, '90s animated good, series, yeah. like that's like I one of the staples show. of our childhood. Yeah. So for them to do an adult version of what they did when we were kids, it's just like it goes hand in hand. So I'm like super, super excited to see um, how close to the comic they'll keep it being. Mm-hmm. And they've been pretty good with animated, like the DC animated stuff has been has been really. Like rated R shit, like they, you know, they curse, they show blood. Like it's not made for like your five year old. Right. Mm-hmm. It's made for us who are adults, but we'll still are willing to right. watch an animated movie. Right. So I'm super, super excited about that. Um, the, I don't know when it comes out. If they just announce who's voicing it, they probably still have to do ADR and all that good stuff. Was that? But um, uh, you know, dubbing after like animation. And all Additional that stuff. dialogue recording. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, check out. Are you know, sad they're not making it a real movie? Uh, sorry, a live action movie no because there, nah. there's so much going on yeah. you know like justice league is about to get yeah. off you know we don't want Jared Dude, we're getting, Leto we're getting a superman and batman yeah. movie like 10 years ago if you would have told me i would have yeah. been like that's never gonna happen yeah that we have to thank will smith for by the way because it how was, are you gonna spin will smith because in the i am legend scene where he's walking through times square there is a billboard oh really of batman versus superman 2016 
oh, the one wow. that so I'll give you that. I don't but think that was that. I'm sure that wasn't the genesis <laughs> sure, of the movie, but I'm I'll sure give it to Will you. Smith had more to do with it than you know the, the press has alluded to. We're really leaning on you hard today, Wong. What, it's all good. What is the PSVR? So the PSVR is Sony's an, uh, kind of an, not answer, but their competition to. I'm sure everyone's heard Oculus Rift is like the new virtual oh, reality so VR system. Is virtual reality. <clears throat> yeah. Brr. Like they've so been trying stupid. to do virtual reality <laughs> for years. Like Nintendo had the Virtual Boy. Do we need it? <sighs> I don't. I'm not sure if we need it because. Today, games are so, good. you know, they're so good and they're so uh, immersive that you don't, but come on, are you not curious? What's it going to look like at your house? Like, what are you doing? It's like a headset. Is it going to be cubic or is it going to be like the smooth, beautiful? No, it's going to be like, you know, updated graphics, like today graphics, right. but you're going to be wearing a, a headset right. over your eyes, over the back of your head, mm-hmm. and you're going to use like other motion capture things on your hands, like the PlayStation remote, and, you know, you turn your head, you're going to see... You know, like if you turn your head inside the game. So Sony, will, you know, came out with their price point, the release date. It comes out in October. Bucks. Yeah, like 339 or something. As opposed I to the... I Ocul- 399 Was it 39 It's under $400. Yeah, it's so under 400 Anyway. <laughs> Barely. And the Oculus Rift, I think they already have it listed at $600. Mm-hmm. So Sony's trying to undercut and be like, hey. But they already said, like, it's not as good as the Oculus. But it's not bad, and we're giving it for cheaper, so that's like their strategy Listen, that might work. As long as Destiny is going to get virtual reality, brother, I'm in there. I don't know. Destiny is sl- dying a slow death right Watch now. Watch your tone. Anyway. <laughs> as long as Ms. Pac-Man gets VR. <laughs> ah, can you imagine it? You'd be looking at people playing it through the on the, on the, uh, in the arcade. Yeah, I mean... Up. That'd be great, actually. That'd be weird. <laughs> but I can't. I I want. I want to try it out. You know, um, Esteban and I are going to E3 this year. Uh. So they'll definitely have that on the floor. So we should get a chance to try it I out. I feel like they've had. Well, I've seen like the o- Oculus. Rift yeah, they've been working on it for a while. At, like Pax East. Yeah, Pax they've Prime been working on it for a long time. Like it's been like coming, coming, but they've been right. like working the kinks out. Every every article I've read of people who have used it have raved about it. Um, obviously, you know, some people don't like as much because like they've been trying to do this for a while with virtual reality but right. people don't react well to it like Nintendo had a virtual boy and I couldn't play it for more than five minutes because I got a headache right away I and say, so did other people aren't most nerds like motion sensor sensitive like motion like allergic sickness. to everything my, my son my son you can't he can't read a text message in a car without throwing up <laughs> like that's how <laughs> like he's a super nerd so hey he won't be know. texting and driving that's Perfect. for darn sure. He might not be driving that kid, poor thing. <laughs> I mean, my <laughs> thing is, you know, if you look at where the graphics were when we were younger to where they are now, to now we're talking virtual reality. Right. We're talking about 4D in movies where right. the seats move. We and, are like, not talking right. about it. They're talking about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> but, like, where are we, like, in the experience? It's hard to even imagine where the fuck we're going to be in five years. Word. It really. Yeah. We might be in the movie. They might just drop us in there and like read these lines. I get yeah. so excited about that stuff though. Not not about virtual reality video games, but just like I can't wait to see what type of shit we come out. Right. With. Yeah. It's, like, it's yeah. It's super. The right. iPad was like six years ago. I yeah. mean, and it's That's cr- and that changed. And now it's like yeah. nothing. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's it's the future looks bright. So. We'll 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 be watching this PSVR thing and seeing kind of oh yeah what and games are doing and what it actually looks like yeah, yeah and hopefully while I'm at E3 I could um, maybe write up some stuff about what I use and what we checked out right. see what's worth getting definitely in the fall and stuff so keep an eye out for when that. is it is it June yeah E3 is yeah, the first June. week of June, June. okay L A cool. L A been cool. circling that bad boy for four years I'm finally gonna go <laughs> but yeah cool what are you guys gonna listen to this weekend. Um, I'm gonna just go on a limb and I'm not gonna listen to anything. I'm gonna be watching Daredevil. <laughs> so yeah. you guys, I that's hope you guys got good man. music yeah, lined up. So Me, true. I'm gonna be watching Daredevil with my wife because she loves it too. Cool. And uh, yeah, so that's what I'm gonna be doing. I got a a little road trip to Philly ahead of me for the weekend. I've been listening to Section 80 like all week long. Yep. Like I needed my hold up for some reason. Yeah. You know so. Hold up. I don't know what I'm going to listen to this weekend. I'm going to try to get into the the Collie Grove album. Um, I want to sit with the Kendrick a little more, but I might just mess around and Pablo it all the way to Philly. 
I'm still so deep in it, man. Like it's it's definitely play it's playing multiple times every single day. Like I can't deny it. Word. Um, it has it has a hold on me. Um, but I do. Can you guys listen to music when you fall asleep? Do you ever? Do you ever do I used to when I was younger. Like that's yeah. what I like. Cause you know my parents. Lights off, ten o'clock, no TV. Yeah. So I, watch I used to, li- to fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. That I watch Friends to go to sleep. Yeah, I can't watch Friends. It makes me laugh. See, I, yeah, <laughs> Frasier. But like when I when knocked I, out. I love yeah. Frasier. Like I I love Frasier. But <laughs> like that for some reasons comforts me. <laughs> to to give you an idea of how big a loser I was. So like my parents were like, yo, ten o'clock, no TV, no nothing, bedtime. And obviously you never knock out before ten. I would I had a little my little stereo next to my bed. Yeah. Me too. Donkey Kong Country 2 soundtrack every single night. It would put me to sleep. To this day, I still have it on my iPod. I listen to the top five iPod. at nine in Maine on this alternative uh, station. Did you I used to do that once in a while. Yeah. I, when I would just like, all right, I can't do this Donkey Kong shit <laughs> another <laughs> night. Make your heart I need race, a break. Like... <laughs> no, it was like very soothing. It was like Super Nintendo, so it was like it wasn't like, you know, it was just like it was really mellow. But I did on Sundays. Casey Kasem was on Z100 doing the. Remember Can Casey you still Casey think songs? of those Donkey Kong songs in your head? Uh, yeah, because I have oh, them on my phone. Oh, my I listen God. to them like on the train. Yeah, <laughs> All right. Well, I brought it up because I like to listen to stuff going to sleep. Um, I fucking live in New York City and shit is loud oh, all yeah. the time. I live on the ground floor. That's a soundtrack in itself. Um, but I get really tired of stuff. Like it, Once I OD on the sleeping music, it's like I got to stay away from it for a long time. Um, and I found a new one recently. Her name's Alice Bowman or Bowman. I mean, it's B-O-M-A-N. She's Swedish. She reminds me of like Bonnie Vare and like Super mm. Ross a little bit. Like this kind of like ghosty acoustic shit. Um, it's cool. Check her out. She only has one thing. So sweet word. All right. Well, that is all for us at the back of the class. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, rate us and subscribe. Tweet us, hashtag B-O-T-C. Once again, I am the Esteban Serrano, at Esteban Serrano on Twitter. I'm Juanca David, at Juan Conqueso, J-U-A-N-C-O-N-Q-U-E-Z-O. I'm getting better at it. Don't spell that? it for these fools anymore. <laughs> oh, man. Juan Conqueso with a Z. Yeah, on Twitter. And, and now yeah. spell yours, because you all got to spell your name. Zach Dion. <laughs> and, uh, it's Zach Dion, and spelled backwards, it's um, E-N-N. Whoa. And I, no, I don't know. Whoa. It's Zach Dion. You'll find it. Cool. All right, y'all. Enjoy your life. See you next week. Peace.